Welcome to Fiona's Food for Life YouTube channel, Cook, Eat, Nourish. I've got another interview lined up for you today. Make sure you listen to the end so you get their three tips to how you can cook today to become healthier. Please like and comment below and don't forget to subscribe. Hope you enjoy it. Hi Caroline, how are you? Very well, thank you. How are you doing? Great, and thank you so much for having me down here today in your fabulous Easy Food studio. I'm happy to, happy to. Yeah, I'm glad it's getting uh, plenty of views. We're usually just doing like photo shoots and videos, so it's nice to do a bit of podcast recording too. Great. So would you mind introducing yourself to my audience? Of course, I'm Caroline Gray. I'm the editor of Easy Food magazine. Um, and Easy Food has been the number one food magazine in Ireland for the last 16 years. Um, so we have the magazine, there's the website and loads of social channels, um, but then also as a company, um, Easy Food is part of Zara Media Group and we do a lot of food content and recipe creation for food brands, uh, mostly throughout Ireland, but also um, in the UK. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. And tell me about your career to date. What, what got you to here? Um, it's been, uh, I suppose, kind of a, an interesting one in a way, but I basically studied journalism when I was in college and I really enjoyed um, like the writing side of things and, you know, I suppose like researching topics and interviewing people. Uh, but I was in college at a time when I suppose the recession hit mm -hmm. and they kind of encouraged everybody to find a niche or find a specialty that you really felt passionate about. Um, so for me that was food and it's always been food and cooking and I love to cook. Um, so I decided that I was really going to kind of do my best to pursue a career in food media, which is, uh, I suppose, a bit unusual mm -hmm. to kind of know to want to get into. So had sort of the background in journalism and decided that I would then try to really get a good foundation in cooking. So um, saving up my money, I had done an internship at the Food Network in New York, which was amazing. It was a amazing place to work and it's just you know a hub of activity and everyone's you know running around the test kitchens and there's cameras everywhere and everyone's talking breathing living food um so at that stage i was like right i'm going to go to uh, culinary school or do a cooking course somewhere just to get that foundation in food so i would know what i was talking about i suppose um and that's when i decided i i had heard of bally malou uh, cookery school and obviously i'd heard nothing but great things and at the time, I was like, you know what, this would be a really interesting way to do the cooking side of things because it's not just a cooking school in a way. It's not yeah. like they're shipping in food and you're just learning how to slice it and dice it. Um, so again, saved up, went to Ballymaloo and it was such an incredible, I always think of it as a food education. Like you learn from, you know, root to shoot, ground up, farm to fork, everything. The mentality around it is just, it's a brilliant, brilliant education for understanding more about food. And um, so I finished that up. And before I kind of had a chance to look back um, in the States for uh, a job, I learned about Easy Food and I met with um, the CEO and the editor at the time just to learn more about like what it was like working at a food magazine. And it just so happened that they had an opening for an internship at the magazine and I felt like it was an opportunity I couldn't pass up. So decided to stay for another six months just to do a little bit of work here at Easy Food. Um, but that six months has turned into eight years. So I've been here since then. <laughs> yeah, so, and it's grown, it's grown so much. I mean, the magazine at that stage was, you know, it was still like 10 times a year. And, um, you know, it was like a hundred pages. And I suppose that was really the crux of the, or that was really like the bread and butter for our entire food division for Zara Media Group was the print magazine. And in that time, I mean, it's like to say that it's been such a, like a shift over to the digital side of things is an understatement. Mm -hmm. But um, so the business model has changed so much, but at the end of the day, like the ethos and the purpose of Easy Food has stayed the same as long as I've been here. And I know since day one, so like the real, heart of what easy food is is all about home cooks and irish producers and easy to find ingredients so um you know it's been really it's been so rewarding to be able to kind of put that background of like writing and cooking into something that like really i think helps so many home cooks out every day 
Great, so yeah. fantastic way you carved your career. Yeah, out there. yeah. so it's an interesting one, but um, yeah. yeah, so here we are. <laughs> and so I think you've almost answered my other question was there, is what makes Easy Food Magazine so successful? I think it is the fact, again, like it's changed so much, um, you know, just it's modernized in so many ways. It's, like I said, it's always been um, a printed magazine. It's available on newsstands and through subscriptions, but we're reaching such a wider audience now. Like I think whereas before we were really thinking of Easy Food as, you know, the subscribers within Ireland that, you know, can relate to the recipes and kind of understand, uh, you know, what the brand is about. But the fact that it's there's the website now and obviously like all of our social channels, the magazine is also available on Readly and Nook for like digital subscribers. Yeah. Um, the content is being repurposed into cookbooks in Australia and for magazines in Finland. Like the content we're creating is so strong, and I think that's what makes the magazine, um, you know, stand the test of time. And what makes it successful is that we've never, you know, as you know, we know ourselves. Like any, there's so many trends out there when it comes to food or cooking or recipes or even styling and photography. But like Easy Food always stays true to what made it successful from day one. And again, it's recipes that, you know, they always answer the question of what's for dinner. And that's always been the ethos of Easy Food. So it's recipes that are quick to make and eat, like, but they're exciting. They're inspirational, but also very doable. So it's something that you can do at home. Um, there are ingredients that you can find in the supermarket. And the fact that we test all of the recipes ourselves in our test kitchen here means that if a reader calls in or writes to us and asks where did you get that um you know that ingredient or even that pot that you cooked it in or the background we can tell them you know we cooked it up in this supermarket or this local shop or this you know um i suppose like supplier from cork or something so yeah. it's kind of nice that like we're doing the testing and the cooking ourselves. Like we're very much putting ourselves uh, in the shoes of the home cook. And so, like I said, as, as many like trends have come and gone, sometimes like we ourselves as people that are interested in food, the, those of us that are putting the magazine together could be really into something, but we know that, do you know what? That's not what easy food is about. Like we're not going to be getting into, I don't know, like foam on plates or, you know, super over stylized, trendy, you know, styling for the dishes because you know, we want the food that we cook in the test kitchen to mirror exactly the results that like a reader will get at home. So I think that's it. I think like just knowing what it is that makes easy food successful. And at the end of the day, it's the home cooks like ourselves. Um, so we're, you know, in a way it's, it's selfish because we can kind of write for ourselves the things that we would want to be cooking. Um, but I think the fact that our audience and our readers respond so well to it and have done for so many years means that, you know, it's, Hopefully we're doing the right thing. <laughs> okay, cool. And can you tell tell me, Caroline, give me an example of say three of the most popular pieces that that Easy Food has. So in Easy Food, it's 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 interesting because like you know sometimes it's one of those it's a case of like if it ain't broke don't fix it because there are some features that have been going in the magazine um, and then of course are kind of repurposed into a digital sphere um, since day one and they still prove so popular. Um, one of them is the there's like a what's in season section that we always do in the magazine and it's it's a real pillar for easy food like we always want to promote eating um what's in season and what's you know what's going to be available at any given time of year uh, because it's just one of the easiest ways we find to eat nutritious foods and eat healthy eat healthily and you know serve that kind of food for your family and even if it's not something you know that you're able to do every day with every meal just to kind of find easy ways to incorporate seasonal ingredients into your cooking is, um, you know, I think it's just one of kind of the most virtuous ways to cook, yeah. but it's also, it's really doable. So the what's in season section, we always have in every issue and like that will always highlight at least one ingredient in particular and kind of show just like kind of new, fun, exciting ways to cook with that. So, um, you know, like whether it's, I believe we're working on one for rhubarb, we've just done cabbage. It's, it's things that you see all the time and you, you, you know, you could probably off the top of your head always think of a couple of ways to cook with it. Yeah. But, you know, even something like cabbage, we had so much fun and we were, we were, we blew ourselves away with how beautiful the, the recipes turned out, how tasty they were. The amount of people in the office alone after we did the shoot for it, 
um, for the March issue. The amount of people that were like, I had no idea you could do this much with cabbage. And this has totally changed my opinion on cabbage. And we love that. Like, I love when there's an ingredient that maybe, you know, it's become a bit like boring in some people's cooking repertoires. And just by putting a new spin on it. And again, with like beautiful photography, showing how nice it can look, um, and physically just you know, tasting it out of the test kitchen. It's, um, it's great. It's a euro like, at the moment for like a huge exactly. cabbage. It's like so That's the thing. good. Yeah. It's so cost effective. Um, and it's just, local. To, it's, seasonal. it's local, it's seasonal, it's nutritious. It's, it's great to just kind of, you know, change the, I suppose, recipe narrative around something like, like cabbage. So it's, you know, we try to do that every month and really keep a spotlight on that kind of eating seasonally type of, uh, you know, mentality. And then another one is our, we've always had a, like a weekly menu planner feature in every issue. So that's literally just, um, you know, a quick weeknight dinner, Monday through, you know, Monday through Sunday with an additional, we always add like a dessert for a Saturday and a Sunday. And, um, you know, again, it's one of those things, it's as simple as can be. It's just, what can I cook for myself on a Tuesday night? And we, um, in that feature, we always focus on, you know, pantry staples, while adding in some again seasonal fresh fresh ingredients but something that's quick to throw together um it's stuff that you don't necessarily have to worry about it working or not working like that's a big thing for us in easy food is just we know ourselves like there's nothing more frustrating than you're all set to try a recipe and you've you spent time you've spent money and you go to make it and it doesn't work and it's so it's such a letdown because you know what were you supposed to feed everybody then what are you feeding yourself so it's important to us that the, obviously the recipes that we include in the magazine are tried and tested and delicious. And if you make it at home, it's, you're going to achieve the same results okay. that we do yeah. in the kitchen. So for the weekly menu planner, that's, that's a big one because again, it's, it's one thing if, you know, you maybe you spend your Saturday and it's going to be a fun experiment cooking something, but if it's Tuesday and everyone's hungry and a bit tired and you need to get dinner on the table in 15 minutes, um, that recipe better work. So, <laughs> so that feature has always been successful and just, you know, it's again, a pillar for easy food. Um, and then, and then that said, like are some of our most popular recipes that have, uh, you know, it's been interesting with, I suppose, having the website and having, you know, the, such an engaged community through our social channels, because you can kind of put recipes up there and you see the ones that people just absolutely eat up. And we laugh all the time because I, I think, our two most popular recipes that we kind of share on social are always um, a homemade version of a spice bag, which we just... My 14 year old's obsessed with spice bags. <laughs> you know, I think it, it just became such a, uh, it was such a, like, I don't even know, it's such a shock to all of us because, you know, here we were always talking about like, you know, this, the seasonal, like, eating seasonally, eating locally, like the fresh, healthy foods that we want to get on the table. And at the end of the day, people love that idea of just a homemade spice bag. So. We will deliver that and like a chocolate biscuit cake. I think it's, you know, it's one of those recipes. It's so simple to make. It's probably something that it's one of the first things so many of us learn how to make. Um, but, you know, we, we've done a few chocolate biscuit cakes over the years for easy food. And um, I think it's kind of encouraging that it's always such a mainstay and it's always so popular because, again, it shows like trends come and go. And, you know, people always want to, I suppose it's great to try something new and do a twist on things. But at the end of the day, sometimes we really just want that like, comforting dessert that you know we loved as a kid and we still want to make time and time again it's full of sugar but it is great that you can make it in advance exactly. and it keeps so when exactly. you're getting stressful building up towards a party or something mm -hmm. having a chocolate biscuit cake you can make it well in advance and yeah. it's it's sort of it's, it, is. it is it's kind of it's kind of just like one of those i suppose like a, a made if you're going to i suppose go for something like that at least you know it's homemade there are so few ingredients you can kind of customize it um like you said make it in advance and, uh, and it doesn't need to stay in your fridge because at that stage exactly. you're building up to a party and you've no space in exactly, your Exactly, yeah, so, you can yeah. just kind of sit on the counter. Sit yeah. on the counter. <laughs> but again, that's just one of those things. Like I know um, I, we, were, we do select, like we do a, a guest chef, or sorry, not a guest chef, like a guest editor for every issue. And we were speak, I was speaking to Donald Skeen um, a couple of months ago and he was guest editing one of the issues. And I was asking him because he's done so many, you know, like his new cookbooks and they've really kind of transitioned into such like a, like a, I suppose more toward a mindset where it's like cooking fresh, fast dishes. And I was asking him like, you know, are these recipes proving really popular for yourselves on you know, your Instagram channels and the, 
you know, website and everything. And he goes, yeah, definitely. But he's like, at the end of the day, he's like, every time I put up a picture of the chocolate biscuit cake, people go crazy. So <laughs> he's like, I guess it's always a little bit of balance. But, um, you know, yeah, it's, it's kind of, you know, if it's going to be there, I suppose I'd rather put it out there ourselves <laughs> and have the tried and tested one that works and we know what goes in it. And you don't need any great baking skills for it. I think that's exactly. part of it. It's like you were saying yeah. that you go into the effort and you try and cook everything mm -hmm. up. But for this, you just put it all in a bowl and mix it up. Exactly. So you don't, yeah. Exactly. I guess it's one of the reasons why it's such a, like a one you learn from the early days. Yeah. <laughs> so Caroline, what are your plans for 2020 with Easy Food? So for Easy Food, I think it's, it really, at this stage, it's more for what, I guess, like I was saying, we're doing so much more on digital um, and have been, I'd say, the last 18 months. We redid our website about 18 months ago, and that has kind of formed the foundation for like a much stronger presence on social media. And again, I think it was something that, you know, a couple of years ago, we kind of tipped away at and sort of just had social and our digital presence to set, kind of support the website, or sorry, to support the magazine. Whereas now we're really seeing that obviously as important, if not more so important than, you know, just the printed version. What I think for Easy Food, what we're really going to be focusing on this year is just trying to get that messaging about home cooking and, yeah. you know, a return to the basics and getting back in the kitchen um, to as many people as we can. And that's where digital is just playing such a, such a strong part. Um, so if we can, um, so if we can just continue reaching more people through that. Um, I think that, so basically our goal for 2020 is to meet, re, reach as many people um, on digital with that same kind of messaging. So yeah, so we've kind of put more um, campaigns out there. Every month we're focusing on something different on social. So, um, you know, in February, rather than just talking about uh, you know, Valentine's Day, it was all about love easy food. And it was a big campaign about getting to see the behind the scenes of what we do in easy food from the test kitchen, meeting the recipe stylists and the, um, you know, the photographer, the photographer, the, yeah. exactly. So everybody that works on easy food behind the scenes, um, we wanted to bring them to the forefront to again, show that it's not just, I suppose, people sitting at a computer necessarily putting yeah. together a magazine. It's a living, breathing kitchen here. Um, so I think, again, a return to the basics and kind of getting people cooking and, you know, making nutritious homemade meals for themselves is always what Easy Food has been and will be about. And it's brilliant that we can just reach so many more people across the globe um, through social and through the website more so than we can reach, you know, with the printed magazine. Um, so, yeah, so it's been like it's been a bit of a shift uh, for ourselves internally to do that but I mean the the reward has just been overwhelming and again there's nothing nicer for us than to see somebody making a recipe that we did in the kitchen here and we know tastes good and is good for you and uses like wholesome whole foods uh, so somebody else to make that at home like you never know if that's gonna be the catalyst for them to think do you know what like maybe I will get into the kitchen more and I will cook for myself more because um, we always think it just takes one recipe or one, you know, really fulfilling success in the kitchen to kind of turn somebody from oh, like a, you know, a bit of a nervous Nelly in the kitchen to somebody who feels like confident about getting in there and, you know, trying something new and experimenting and cooking for others. So, and you have a test kitchen here. Could you give mm -hmm. me an example maybe of some of the clients or some of the things that you do yeah. other than testing your own recipes? Yeah, for of magazines? course. So, yeah, so we work with a lot of clients, um, because I suppose, again, we've been doing this for ourselves for 16 years. Um, it makes sense that we can do it for others. <laughs> so, uh, for instance, like we would be doing um, a lot of work with, I suppose, like many different brands across Ireland. But like one particular that we've been working with for a few years um, is like John West. So we'd be doing like, you know, helping them create recipes for uh, like all like they're always releasing I suppose like new really exciting um, flavors for like the John West range from like tuna to mackerel to salmon to like instant um, you know recipe or sorry like instant meal kits <clears throat> and so with any brand with any food brand it's they have these you know like great new products and again and it's like they tick so many boxes for you know like high in omega-3s and high in protein and part of a well-balanced diet so it's like how do we make this achievable for you know somebody at home to cook with uh so for ourselves like we would take those products 
test them out in the kitchen. We might think like, right, let's do a range of, you know, uh, salads or meals that somebody can make for a busy family or maybe something that somebody would want to eat if they're on their own and they're just back from the gym. So kind of keeping these things in mind. And again, that's what we would do for the magazine. We would say like, right, let's focus on an ingredient or a time of the year. And then like, what's the goal for it? Is it dinners? Is it new ways with things? Is it 15 minute meals? Um, so we would kind of take those products, take some recipe ideas into the test kitchen and just kind of work away with them. So we'd, you know, test the salads and test how long it takes to make the 15 minute meal. Is it actually 15 minutes? Is it more like half an hour? Are we rude? So it's like, you know, these things are so important for ourselves because, you know, we want to have that authenticity with our readers and our followers. But if we're working on behalf of a brand and we're working in partnership with a client, then it's more important than ever that, you know, if we're putting our, I suppose, like expertise behind something in the kitchen, then we need to stand by it. So, um, yeah, so it was great because like we could test all the recipes, but then it really doesn't end there. It, like bring comes then into the studio uh, here and we would uh, photograph all of the dishes and those photos then can be used, you know, whether it's on the back of packs for certain products or obviously they would be using them on their own social channels, uh, website, what any kind of activation they need really. Um, and then it's fun that we can get, kind of get like a bit creative and do different things like, you know, not even just recipe videos, but uh, I suppose like, you know, slow-mo videos or tracking videos or cool like parallax assets and stuff. So it's all these things that it's great. Like we're very lucky in that we have a real creative team working in-house and, you know, they're always like bursting with new ideas and they'll see something somewhere and want to do like this cool video for it. And you never think it might work for, you know, like a, a range of like tuna or, you know, cookies or um, meal kits, but like, it's crazy what you can do with it. And like food is such an, it is a really, you know, engaging and kind of exciting content piece. So, um, yeah, so it's kind of like, we'll apply those things, uh, those ideas, those like, I suppose like creative waves to, um, client work and for our own work. And yeah, so at the end of it, so it kind of starts with just an idea, like, right, we have this new product, we have this new thing. We want to get some recipes out there for it. And so what we'll deliver is like recipes, photography, video, other creative, and then obviously tips from the kitchen. And, and again, it's nice to be able to, if, if they have a question on how something worked, yeah. just can ask the food stylist and say like, how long did that take? Or did that really work? Or should we change it more? Is it too, you know, is it too salty? Is it too high in fat? Is it something like what needs to change? So it's great just having, you know, somebody can walk in your client can walk in, have access to the full team, the full suite and say like, okay, let's get this right. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. And did I see you were doing some work with local producers and highlighting local producers yeah. at the moment as mm -hmm. well? Yes. That's always, again, kind of a, a main pillar for Easy Food is just, you know, we're all about, you know, we can say like eat seasonally and like ingredients that you want to be able to get from, you know, the local supermarket. But at the same time, like the, obviously something that really impressed me so much to stay for so long is just that connection to food that I think is, you know, such a unique calling card. In Ireland like there's such a connection to where the food comes from and an understanding of it that I think is really inherent um, in people from like in in Irish people that you don't find everywhere so I think it's so special and important to nurture that and that's something that again we feel really strongly about in easy food so we always have in every issue um, a column called eat Ireland and in that column um, Jocelyn who's the deputy editor will highlight a local producer and do like an in-depth interview and then a recipe featuring one of their products um, and it can range from you know we're doing one for the april issue on mushrooms but it could be like it's been everything from like mead to honey to um mackerel like it's it's just everything it's it's really all about like eating the <laughs> eating the island in a way yeah. so you know whether it's that article or just you know always kind of looking to a local producer or supplier or like, you know, an up and coming producer. Like, you know, if we're at events and we meet somebody who, you know, is uh, like, I met somebody last week and he's doing, I think it's like pizzas with just like a sweet potato base. Yes. And yeah, yeah and it's like, yeah, yeah, and he's brilliant. And he was saying, oh, you know, he's working on this on his own at night and it's a one man to, and like, it's that kind of story that like, it's so great that people are doing this and they're putting their time and money and resources into creating these amazing food products so we want to be a stage for them and to champion them and say like you know get the word out about them because you know it, it's real food and that's the, that's the main thing like we'd 
you know, we want to be promoting food that is, you know, that's local and has love behind it and, you know, it's sustainable and it's, it's, it's so healthy for you then too, because it's yeah. not, you know, if there's not loads of food miles and it's, again, it's whole foods, whole ingredients, you feel good about eating it yourself and feeding it to your family. So, yeah, so I think in general, just supporting locals, supporting, especially like Irish producers is a huge, hugely important part of easy food. And it's something that, again, like the what's in season, like the weekly budget menu, it's always going to be there for easy food. So the more we can do to promote local producers, like the more we will. Okay, great. Yeah. And so Caroline, one of the things I always ask the people I'm interviewing is what three tips could you give that my audience could use now mm -hmm. to improve the health of the nation? And I'm sure it's going to be a summary of what you said before. But <laughs> <laughs> go, go I do think, I, I'd say, I mean, definitely. So I like cooking from scratch couldn't be more important. And I'm sure that's something that all your interview yeah. guests say, but it is, it's, it's, it's hugely important. And I think um, it's one of the smallest things you can do that makes such a big difference. So um, getting used to buying just whole foods, like staying away from, you know, pre-prepared meals or, uh, like things that have loads of preservatives in it or ingredients you can't pronounce, like by sticking to, you know, f fresh produce, um, you know, fruits and veg and grains and just understanding a little bit, even again, like I said before, if it's one day a week that you're just challenging yourself to try to create something, um, using whole ingredients and from scratch, you'll amaze yourself at, I think, how easy it is to do and then how you can build on that. And then likewise, something that we always promote um, in Easy Food is just, I suppose, learning even a small repertoire of recipes. I think it's gaining the confidence in the kitchen that will inevitably lead to, I think, like a, a, you know, a better relationship with cooking and food and kind of relying on foods that are going to be good for you because you're making them yourself. And you know, sometimes I think people get a bit overwhelmed at the thought of like this big long recipe or what if I do something wrong or what if, you know, there's so much to learn, how could I ever get there? But really, I think by focusing on, you know, say if you learn how to roast a chicken, one simple chicken, and then you learn how to do that, you know, it might take a couple of times to get it perfectly right. But once you've learned that, you can change it up. You can do so many different, like do a different glaze on it or, you know, joint it first or maybe you're going to do barbecue chicken. Like I think it's, learning one basic recipe, building the confidence in the kitchen, and then from there, you know, you might have five offshoot recipes from that one thing, and there you are with five okay. recipes under your belt instead of one. Um, and then I suppose a big one is really just kind of understanding what eating seasonal foods means. I think by eating foods that are going, or by focusing on things that are going to be like at, the, at their prime at that time of year, um, and learning new ways to cook with them adds such a nutritional boost to the meals that you prepare. Um, one tip that I thought was great was that instead of, you know, necessarily building your meal around, um, I don't know, not even like I suppose like what's on offer or like the meat counter, whatever, but go to the produce section first and see what looks good or see what's, what's, what's fresh or what's seasonal. And, and if you don't know, then ask, like it's, I, you know, I know, um, I interviewed Doreen Allen before and she said that was something that is such a, you know, that should be something that's kind of commonplace in supermarkets. Like you should be able to ask the people working like yeah. what's in season, what should I be looking for right now? And if not, then like, you know, if you have a farmer's market nearby or that's available to you, like that couldn't be better. That's the, yeah. that's the Mecca of fresh seasonal ingredients. So I think becoming more familiar at the times of year, like what I should be focusing on and, and build a meal around that. And that's where, you know, we hope things like that what's in season um, recipe feature or those things that we put out there kind of help people. Because if you're going to the shop and you can see, okay, cabbage is in season, what can I do with this? And you see this, you know, easy, achievable, delicious looking recipe. Um, again, I, we, we are big believers in like, it's the confidence in it. Like anybody can cook and anybody can make themselves a nutritious, balanced meal. It's, it's getting the knowledge around it and not feeling overwhelmed by it. And, you know, hopefully if, if you feel overwhelmed, then I think all too often the easy solution is just to get a takeaway or a pre-prepared meal or something that, you know, doesn't really do you any good. It's not a, it's not something that you want to be relying on for like a healthy meal for a family. So, um, yeah, so I so think- we have to cook from scratch. We have the seasonal and what's your third one? Cook from scratch, the seasonal, 
And um, I, I think it's, to be honest, I think it's really, it, it's, it's still that kind of like the recipe confidence. I think it's just, you know, arming yourself with like recipes across the board that if you do only have, you know, 20 minutes or if you're in the kitchen right away, it's like you don't fall back on the, oh, I don't even know, um, I'm just going to pick up the phone and get a takeaway. I think it's yeah. just kind of knowing straight away, like, I can do this and I can do, and with these few ingredients, I can throw this together. Um, kind of master the basics and then master the, the basics. basics. I yeah. think so. Yes. That's, okay. that's what we would go for. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. Now, what would you choose as your last meal, your death mm. row meal? Oh, that's, it's, it's funny. I always ask this question to people too. <laughs> and I always feel like if they don't have an answer. They're not thinking about food <laughs> enough. <laughs> so my death row meal <laughs> would be a really fresh seafood pasta. Um, it would be uh, like, and I think the beautiful thing is like, and I, I always think of this one I had once on, on holidays in Italy, but at the same time, like you can get it anywhere. Do you know what I mean? Like the, the seafood around Ireland is just, oh, it makes my heart sing. I love it. So it would be like really fresh, like homemade, like spaghetti or, you know, some kind of like long noodle um, with like clams and prawns and mussels and tons of garlic and like fresh cherry tomatoes and like kind of like a nice oily sauce I think okay um but like a light kind of sauce like nothing like dripping in it you want to taste I just really want to taste like seafood. garlic and the seafood and yeah freshness okay. sounds lovely like and hungry. yeah that would be mine <laughs> would you have anything to drink with that oh like I mean I probably have to have just like a nice fresh glass of like a crisp white wine or something with okay. it you know but um yeah what I yeah I think I, I, when I, I remember having this meal and what I remember having was actually just like this really cold glass of sparkling water, which sounds so bad and like fresh lemon and lime in it. Yeah. And so, and, and it was a lunchtime thing, wasn't it? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I'd say if it was dinner, there would, there would have to be a glass of like a fresh How would you have a dessert with that? I, well, see, this is my thing. I always think of my favorite dessert without fail would be like a really nice like apple tart or apple pie which does not go with seafood pasta oh, whatsoever well, that's your last meal. but if it's my <laughs> last meal this is the thing this is what i always tell people it's like <laughs> if it's the last thing i'm eating i don't necessarily mind if they go together or not but like i think like a homemade apple tart is just for me with like you know some like nice vanilla ice cream just it can't be beat it's simple and you know traditional but um, yeah, no fuss here. <laughs> okay, brilliant. And would you mind telling my audience where they can get in touch with you or where they can find of Easy course. Food, etc.? Yeah, of course. So Easy Food is on sale. Um, the magazine is on sale in news agents across the country. Um, you can also take out a subscription to it, but we're probably the most readily available um, on our website is easyfood.ie. And then we're on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and Pinterest at Easy Food Mag. Um, and you can also actually check out the digital edition of Easy Food on Redley and Nook. Super. Well, yeah. thank you very much. Thank, thank you for your Fiona. time today. It was great. Thanks so much. It was so much fun. I love talking about food. So <laughs> this was great. Me too. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed today's interview with Caroline Gray from Easy Food Magazine. It's such a fantastic resource of recipes and tips for all the home cooks out there. Please like and comment below. And why not check out some of my other videos, like how to make a prawn and aubergine curry, or chicken with mustard and mushroom. Two really simple dishes that can be made at home in 20 minutes with very few ingredients. Thanks for watching, see you soon.